Hello and welcome to Open Aperio Online 2021. My name is Olaf Schulte. I'm the current chair of the Opencast board, and I would like to introduce you to a video on Opencast, the open source video management system. The video takes the form of a number of testimonials with different people from different institutions talking about the general and the specific advantages of using an open source video management system, not only in light of a global pandemic, but certainly but certainly, certainly with a specific view uh, on how Opencast was helpful during the last 12 to 15 months. So buckle up and let us tell you why Opencast is the best possible solution to host your academic video content. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Carlos Turro from UP Valencia in Spain. We have been users of Opencast since 2013 and we are very happy with it, uh, especially this year, this pandemic year, because we moved from about 80 hours a week to 3,500 hours a week. So we have moved from 4,000 recordings a year to this year that we have like 41,000 recordings as today, and we have like one month more for, for this year. So that's a, a huge improvement. And and we have that and also live streaming. So we have been able to, to make a technological response to the pandemic without per use licenses, without per room licenses, everything on premises, which was very important for us because we wanted to keep the ownership of our recordings integrated with Sakai. So we are able to use the site structure of Sakai. Uh, users would only go to the recordings that they should see. Everything goes, let's say, uh, automatically. So management is comparatively easy for the, for the dimension of the problem. And when we have, when we have any problem, Opencast has a great community. Mailing list goes pretty well, so everybody is helpful and, and, and somebody is able to answer. So we are very happy from being in Opencast, and we are very proud to be part of Opencast and to be part of Apireo, also because of Sakai, because we are Sakai too. And that's all I wanted to tell you. Thanks. Hi, my name is Lars Kieser and I'm also part of the Opencast community. Now, for us, as was probably so many of you, uh, last year meant getting a lot of new people into digital learning. And uh, one thing that really, really helped out was, for us at least, the um, integration of different tools into each other so that people did not have to, to wander to different areas and that really find the tools they would need, but they could uh, log into their learning management system and then um, create a course, invite the students and having all these tools they needed at a single place. And one particular uh, area where this worked out very, very well for us last year was the integration of video conferencing software um, that we use, Big Blue Button, and the video processing powers and uh, analysis and distribution we have at Opencast. And so what we did is to create an integration between Big Blue Button, who would um, have the, the video conferencing and, and would then record whatever you do in there. And then for processing analysis and distribution, it would transfer this raw data uh, over to Opencast where it's, uh, yeah, it could offload all this load it would otherwise have on the video conferencing system. And Opencast could take its time and, and prepare all of this and uh, distribute that. And for the students in the end, they would just go into the LMS course and have all of their videos. Uh, regardless of them being from uh, a video conferencing system or 
uh, from the lecturer who prepared these videos, everything was at the same place and so they did not have to wander around trying to, to find all the resources, but they had this in one place. And what allowed us to do this is uh, that all these systems are open source, so we could uh, take a closer look at this um, and really modify them in the way we needed them. And, and this really, really helped out last year. Let's talk about Opencast Studio next. This web application is designed to allow technically less versed users to very easily record their screen, webcam and voice. Since Opencast Studio runs fully in the browser, users don't even have to install any software but can start recording right away. When a user opens Opencast Studio, they have to choose what video sources to record. Here we will record both the webcam and the user's screen. After clicking the respective button, the browser prompts you to allow access to the video stream. We will select an already started PowerPoint presentation here. In the next step, we can choose whether microphone audio should be recorded or not. With that, we are ready to record. Once we are done, the resulting video can be previewed. Here, we can also trim undesired segments from the start and the end of the video. Finally, we have the option to download our video or to upload it to a connected Opencast server, where it would be automatically processed and published. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Opencast Studio helped many organizations tremendously. For example, it was used extensively at universities to quickly give lecturers the means to provide their students with video lessons. Hi, my name is Greg Logan and I'm the Opencast QA Community Coordinator. My colleagues have spoken about Opencast's scalability, but I really want to drive home just how flexible and scalable we really are. We have lots of adopters from national research and education networks to regional groups like nrw.de to individual institutions and Opencast fits their needs. Some of these adopters host for multiple tenants providing Opencast for a bunch of other institutions, while others just host for their college inside of their larger university. The additional cost to do that, zero. Opencast gives you that flexibility. Lots of our adopters start with a single machine for testing, then scale outwards as their needs grow. Need more power? Add some hardware. Don't need that power in the summer? Turn it off. Want to run entirely in the cloud with a really tight service level agreement? That's being done. One of our adopters even has multiple campuses, but there's just enough bandwidth between them to synchronize their Opencast installs once per day. That's installs, plural. Each site processes its own input video, and then overnight the data is synchronized to the other Opencast sites so that any student on any campus can still get their recording. Now imagine trying to do that with a solution from a more traditional vendor. Opencast gives you the choice and the flexibility to do that without locking you into expensive contracts or licensing. Opencast also lets you process your media on your hardware the way you want it. Whether you've got a data center with the latest and greatest hardware or a bunch of repurposed student computer lab machines, Opencast will run on it and likely run well. Need really low bandwidth video for students in remote areas for poor connectivity? That's easily done. Need crazy high megabit 4K video for students to be able to read small print on a blackboard? That's done too. Opencast's ability to deliver the quality you want is limited only by your imagination, budgets for computer time, and cameras in the classroom once we can safely return. Hi hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the conference. I'm Jody Santo, Director of Software Engineering at Harvard's Division of Continuing Education. From here on, I'll abbreviate that to Harvard DCE. I lead the software engineering team for teaching and learning. Here at Harvard DCE, our customers are very, very demanding. We have a lot of, we, we, so much so that we even have a team of professional videographers and video producers who shoot our classes. And then they use Opencast to trim and polish our lecture videos before pushing them out to the internet for students to watch. <clears throat> Another thing that's uh, very important to our customers is they want extremely high quality video. So the way we uh, achieve the very highest possible quality source files <clears throat> is we use 
high-end professional capture devices. So these are machines in the classroom that take the raw video feeds and convert them into live streams and source files. And we also use professional AV equipment, wiring, lighting, and so on in the classrooms. <clears throat> we then uh, transcode these very high quality source files into multiple outputs so that the videos look great regardless of the speed of your internet connection. Another thing our customers <clears throat> uh, demand is they want the processing time of OpenCast to be outrageously fast. <clears throat> so um, to accomplish this, we run OpenCast in Amazon's cloud, which is called AWS. Um, in order to make the transcode time, the, the conversion time of these videos, uh, we rent uh, the biggest, fastest machines that AWS has available. Um, we even automatically scale up and down the number of worker nodes based on how busy the system is. Customers also demand exceptionally high availability. That is, they, it must stay up at all times. Uh, and we've managed to achieve extremely high availability beyond even what expensive commercial products uh, have been able to provide. <clears throat> Do this by using Amazon's cloud, by using OpenCast and all of its robustness, and also by streaming the video <clears throat> to students via Amazon's um, content delivery network called CloudFront. And for live streaming, <clears throat> we actually stream to a different content delivery network run by Akamai. And Akamai has primary and secondary data centers. Then <clears throat> in each classroom, we actually have redundant capture agents, two capture devices, each recording the same content. And the primary capture agent is then streaming to Akamai's primary data center. And <clears throat> the secondary capture agent is streaming to their secondary uh, data center. So even if Akamai, this massive cloud provider, has trouble with one of their data centers, our live streams are very likely to continue to run just fine. Finally, I wanted to mention that because we've done all this, because we've used OpenCast so successfully, um, we now have an archive of professionally recorded uh, high quality source files going back almost eight years, <clears throat> which we can now browse, extract, uh, and even convert into other formats or other products. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Daniel Abbott, and I work on the Educast of NRW project. The purpose of this project is to provide a video management delivery platform for all higher education institutions within the state of North Westphalia in Germany. For this project, we chose the software OpenCast, for many, of course, because it is a video management and delivery software with a great community behind that. But furthermore, in this case, we specifically chose it because it has a multi-tenancy feature. This multi-tenancy feature within OpenCast means that we can provide completely separate spaces for each participating institution. Within these spaces, they can then manage their own content and connect those to their own learning management systems and that does not affect all the other institutions which are using the same service. This service can then be run on the shared, very powerful cloud infrastructure. Furthermore, for us as the administrators, that also means that we only have to deploy one single OpenCast instance and not one instance per higher education institution that wants to use our service. So that also means that we save time on deployment and maintenance. Hello, it's me again, Olaf from ETH Zurich. And this time round, I would like to talk about the advantages of an open source software per se and the advantages of the OpenCast community. Um, in that ETH Zurich uh, faced the challenge of finding an integration piece between Zoom on the one hand and OpenCast uh, on the other hand. So. Basically, recordings from Zoom should be integrated in OpenCast for distribution and archival. And we were talking to a number of partners within the OpenCast community when we realized that actually two of them were already 
working on such an integration piece. And while we could not exactly copy their solution, we certainly did benefit from, from their prior code, from their experience, and also from, from talking to them. And what we did was to develop our, our own solution based on, on the work uh, they had done before. And obviously, we also then took our own code back to the community in order for other schools to benefit from this solution uh, we have at ETH. And this is the kind of thing that you can only do with open source software for, for legal reasons. Um, and obviously, this is, this is the kind of collaboration uh, you can only have in a, in a community of like-minded institutions who are all willing to contribute and can then all benefit from that kind of uh, community and software. Hello, my name is Rüdiger Rolf and I'm working at the University of Osnabrück in Germany. I'm a member of the Opencast community from the start and I'm active on the Opencast board for several years now. Within the pandemic, educational videos have proven to be an essential tool for digital teaching. And Opencast offered many universities an affordable and easy way to upscale their capacities or to quick start with this technology. Especially the high degree of automation within Opencast helped to keep the cost down. Hardware was, in many cases, more important than additional staff. In the beginning of 2020, Opencast and the Opencast community were ready for this change to digital teaching. We had, with Opencast Studio, a tool that enabled teachers with no previous knowledge about video production to start recording their educational videos from home. We immediately started to work on an easy way to integrate video conference recordings from Big Blue Button and Zoom. All educational media can now be found and managed in one place so your content can stay and can be re reused after the pandemic. And here you can notice another advantage of Opencast. You own your content. Opencast stores your content in open formats and offers you an interface to import and export your videos as you like. Depending on how you host Opencast, the ongoing cost to keep your content can be quite low. Opencast integrates very well with existing infrastructure. You can import schedules from your room booking systems and you can integrate Opencast easily in most learning management systems. We are already working on the future of learning with media. A new editor has just been released, a new portal is currently under development and our community is reviewing how the use of video in education changes and we aim to address these new demands. As Opencast is a software that is developed by a community that really practices lecture recordings at their universities, we aim to find solutions that help us in our everyday life. We need an efficient and reliable system. We need a software that users understand and that does not create many support requests. But we also need our community to be active and to grow. We need you to file bugs. We need you to support each other in chat and on the mailing list. We need you to help us keeping our documentation up to date. And for sure, we need more developers that are interested in the field of video recording, video management and video processing. But if you do not have a developer at hand, we are frequently running crowdfunding campaigns for new features and our QA and community manager also needs funding. So if you're interested, have a look at opencast.org and become a part of our community.